Preparing for a long ride can take a little bit of time, but whether you're preparing for a training ride or you're preparing to practice for a big event, it's always worth taking that little bit of extra time to make sure that you have everything that you need. And I always like to take out a little bit more than I think I'm likely to need, just in case you get caught with a puncture or some kind of other mechanical and you're out on the road for a little bit longer. So the all important fluids need to go in bottles. You can always find some larger uh, one litre bottles for your bike and then a variety of different food and um, a mixture of sports fuel. I always use the secret training uh, juice bars and gels. These are things that I've always used on the turbo as well during the winter. And then you can use the old hydro tab tubes to put the jelly babies in and you can fit five jelly babies into one of these tubes. Um, the other thing that I like to do is brioche with some jam. Um, you can reuse these little plastic uh, containers for them so that they'll slip into your pocket. Um, and then you've got a variety of food that means that you'll be well fueled for the entire ride. When it comes to your drinks bottles, you don't have to buy sports fuel, but I like to use this big energy on the longest of rides. This is again from Secret Training. And it just makes sure that you've got that energy drip feeding into your system the entire way through the ride and I think that's one of the key points for any long ride whether it's a training session or whether it's a longer challenge type event such as an Ironman or a longer triathlon you always need to make sure that you have enough energy going in all of the time so I'll take you through my prep and then we'll get out on the road. Today I'm making up the jam brioche hole but if I was preparing this for a race day then I'd be cutting them in half and wrapping them in foil so that they're bite-sized chunks to devour during the course of a race. The same can be applied to each of the cereal bars. Break them off into chunks that you know you'll be able to just pop into your mouth during a race, but on a training day like this, they can stay whole because I might not use all of them during the course of the ride. When it comes to making up bottles, always make up to the specification on the packet that you're using because that will give you the right amount of energy balance to the electrolytes that are contained within the powder. So once the bottles are made up and the food has been sorted, the final thing that I always do is make sure I have enough jelly babies. These are absolutely vital, I find, in the final hour of a ride when you just need a little bit of a sugar boost to get you home. So now that I've got everything sorted, I'm going to be packing everything into my bar bag. On these longer rides, sometimes you don't have quite enough space in your back pocket and it can be a good idea to take out a third bottle as well. So it's not something that you'd necessarily do on a race because you'd have a feed zone or you'd have your transitions in a triathlon to pick up extra fuel. But certainly on these training rides, you need to make sure that you've got enough room to pack everything that you need and also all of those extras. Bar bags come in many shapes and sizes, so it can be difficult to find them directly off the internet. Head down to your local bike shop They'll be able to look at the size of your handlebars and the other things that you're probably carrying on there, such as your bike computer, and size you up to get one that is the perfect fit. So that's the bike set up. Last but not least, the sun cream. Even when you're not training abroad, having good sun cream is vital. Make sure you find one that works for you and always apply it before you go out, especially when you're going out for long rides. Everyone has the final few things they always do before a ride. For me, it's helmet, glasses, socks and shoes, and I'll be off. Okay then, all set, let's go. The purpose of today's ride is a, a long ride in zone two, slightly higher zones on the climbs. Um, just to test out again, really, the nutrition that I'll be using during the season when I'm racing, probably start racing in April time, maybe late March. So it's really important to test the things that were working last year, make sure they still work this year. Always important to use the sports fuel that's going to be in your drinks bottles. In a professional team, those drinks bottles will be pre-made by a soigneur and that'll be the only thing available in the feed. So you have to make sure that your body can handle it. And you also have to make sure that everything you do on the bike from a nutrition perspective is going to work for your digestive tract. You don't want things sat in your stomach that your body can't digest. When you're working hard on a bike, even in the lower zones, 
but the blood is diverted away from the stomach. So things have to be a little and often. That's usually the best advice. The small bite-sized chunks, regular sips if you drink. So today's ride will be just about testing all that out, consolidating what I already know, and getting a good bank of endurance in the tank. So about half an hour into the ride now, and I've had my first bit of food. I started off with a banana. I quite like having the slower release um, energy at the start of the ride. Um, and then we save the sugary stuff um, for the second hour and beyond. And don't forget, every time you do take something to eat, have a drink, because that not only keeps you hydrated, but it helps your body to digest the food you've just taken on board. So on a ride like this, I plan to eat every 20 minutes. It's not the entire thing in each packet. Uh, as I said before, I could have cut everything up, um, which is something I would do on a race day. But for a ride like this, I can just eat half of the packet and then put the rest of it back into my pocket. So first up after the banana is going to be one of the jam brioche. And again, I can just eat half of that and put the other half still in its packet back in my pocket. Learning to drink as you're climbing is an essential skill to have. It's going to make you really uncomfortable if you get to the top of a climb and discover that you haven't been able to drink and then you need to down your entire bottle. So it's much better to learn to drink a little bit and often whilst you're climbing as that not only keeps the energy going in little by little but it also helps your stomach to empty more easily. Now when you get to the top of a descent it's a good idea to have something to eat as well because even if it's not quite your 20 minutes or the time that you've allocated for yourself during a ride getting something in your body that can be absorbed during the descent while your heart rate is a bit lower is always a good idea. Learning to do anything but concentrate and hold the bars on a descent is a very advanced skill but if you're ready to learn then it's definitely better to practice by yourself before you do it in a group. Taking your hands off the bars and knowing which brake is covered should you need to. Always remember you can drop that bottle if something uh, suddenly needs you to cover the brakes. But learning to eat and drink on the descent is the place where your body's most likely to be able to recover. But remember, the higher up you are, the more likely it is to be windy. And that can also mean sudden gusts of wind that you're not expecting. So just be careful, but remember that is another place where your body's going to recover more easily and you can get that food and fuel on board. Now often on rides you'll come across some short steep climbs and my favourite way to tackle these is to try and maintain as much momentum as possible so that you get up and over the climb as quickly as you can. The uphills are obviously the slowest part of the ride and they're going to take the most energy out of you. So the quicker you can get through them without overdoing it, the better. So when you get there to the bottom of the climb, make sure you're in a good gear. Don't suddenly change to a really small gear and find your legs spinning. Make sure you've got something underneath the pedals to push on and even try and get out the saddle to maintain some of that speed for a little bit longer. The advantage of knowing how long the climb is can certainly help with the pacing of this. Sometimes though you'll find yourself at the bottom of a really long climb, 10, 20 k sometimes in some of the challenge rides. So it's really important that you choose the technique that's appropriate for the climb ahead. Now it's not particularly nutrition related, but there's a good tip for using on any descent, especially in a training ride or in a ride, a challenge ride with lots of other people around you. Just remember, that it's not a race and it's more important to get down there safely than it is to try and practice too many fast corners. So keep safe, keep two hands on the bars unless you're practicing eating and drinking. Make sure you look ahead and look for the exit of the corner. And don't forget to do all your braking before you get to the corner so you can have a smooth ride round and accelerate out. So I'm well into the second half of the ride now. The first half was definitely the hilliest part. I've been through about a litre and a half in my bottles and I've also 
beaten both brioche in four different sections, the banana and the juice bar. Um, it'll probably be the caffeine gel next and then a mix of the jelly babies and the cereal bars to finish. But I really made sure that I front loaded the ride with the fuel because you really can pay dividends if you've got enough fuel in for the second half of the ride when it starts to get tough then you're not eating into those all important glycogen stores in your muscles and everybody has around about two hours of glycogen in their muscles so it's important to make sure you're keeping topping that up on these longer rides especially right then let's get cracking i'm the sort of rider that gives everyone a wave when i'm out on my bike but sometimes that seems to attract some unwanted attention and i always wonder whether it's actually invited the person you've passed to sit on your wheel and take some draft Occasionally you get those that come and sit on your wheel and then realise that they're following a girl and don't want to be and they smash it back past you looking over their shoulder to see whether you're going to take the bait. Other times you come across groups who are out training and that seems to have happened to me today. So the lads that were sat on my wheel, they do stuff there. When we come to hills I seem to catch them and then they get away a bit on the descent, there's four of them. Do you think I should wing it past them again? I'm not sure four versus one is very fair, to be honest. Well, I've just started the final proper climb of the ride, although it is up and down all the way back. This one's called Garbage Mountain. I'm sure it's got a proper name. Um, I've just had a salted flapjack. No, I've just had a salted caramel flapjack. Very good for morale at this point of a ride. There's about an hour left to run. Um, and those four lads, well, they seem to be doing a, a bit of an effort. Then they just stopped. So I count that one as a victory for me. So I'm at the top and I feel like I should explain why I referred to this as Garbage Mountain. The reason being is because I'm just passing on the left here, the rubbish dump. So this is where all the garbage for Tegese and presumably most of Lanzarote gets dealt with. Hence the nickname, Garbage Mountain. Whew, so there we go, I've just about finished. Uh, four and a half hours coming up. Um, just over 75 miles. So I've eaten almost all of my food and I think there's probably three tips that I'd give anyone who's looking to fuel well. Being able to finish a ride, feeling strong. Uh, so looking at your power file if you have one or even just can you get out the saddle on a little climb are you clamping up those are a couple of ways you can work out whether or not you've been fueling well secondly don't just have fluid or gels your stomach needs something solid inside to, to help it function and the longer you can keep those solids going in the longer you'll ride strongly and then the third one is don't count calories Look for the things that you know will work and practice using them in training. Um, if you can use them in training, in different types of training sessions, then it's a good sign that you'll be able to use them in a race as well. So I hope you've enjoyed accompanying me on this ride. It's been a bit of a, an epic. A bit out of breath as you can hear, but it's great to be able to get these longer rides in and practice the fueling for me as well. See you next time.